What's good? What's good? What's good? This is Raw Truth Media giving you the raw content that you deservedly need. Please like and share this video. Peace and blessings to everyone. I mean, everyone that supports the channel. It's all love here. It's all positivity. Uh, let's make sure you hit the like button. That's the first thing you should do when you come to the room. Take your shoes off. Be relaxed. And I'm going to tell you how visiting Jackson State was very, very uh, much a fun experience. It was a blessing. I want to say shout out to Ken Clark, to Zoe, and Tiger Talk with the 1400 Club. Uh, they've shown a lot of love. Great brothers. Let's make sure to subscribe to their channel so they can get to 10K each or even more. Uh, Rusty Shackelford said salute, salute to you. So let me start by the beginning. So I flew from Seattle to then Dallas, then Jackson State. And apparently, it, this is how funny it was. My flight and Ken's flight was around the same time because – Ken's in the West Coast. I'm in the West Coast. So it kind of aligned well. And uh, when I was there, saw Ken there. And he said, you know what? He's, he asked me, when does your hotel start? Like, when, when you check in? I said, like, around 4 o'clock. He said, that's great. I could show you around Jackson. So I was rolling with Ken. One thing I noticed about the city of Jackson and I could tell, and I'm not surprised by this. I don't think people are aware. Since Coach Prime became the head coach, businesses are starting to boom. New houses are being built. You're seeing businesses being built like at this moment right now. And I didn't even realize that. I'm looking around. I said, man, there's, there's a lot looking forward to. Shout out to David Williams. Peace and blessings, peace and love to you, my brother. Uh, the hurdler, I see you in the chat. Make sure to share this video if you haven't. Um, and as we were riding around, we went to uh, the school store at Jackson State. It was a lot of people there. I made sure to get some merch. <laughs> and don't worry, I'm think uh, not thinking, but I will in due time. My goal is to get every single uh, merch from each school, each HBCU. I think it's possible. So from Grambling to FAMU, I got a couple of FAMU stuff, but then the list goes on. Texas Southern, PV, oh, definitely PV. But let me digress. Other things I I saw, I, I got to saw, see, uh, the place that the late great Medgar Edwards used to stay at. And then just driving around, I, I saw the uh, Medgar and Marley Evers home national monument. A lot of history there, a lot of museums at Jackson. Uh, historical landmarks at Jackson. 
there's a lot of history there and I don't think people are aware of it. Um, you got to look beyond the history books and that's the good thing about YouTube and other devices. You could go and look at the history of not only Mississippi, but Jackson, Mississippi, the people, the people in Jackson are so kind, so nice. If you show love to the people of Jackson, Mississippi, they will show love to you right back. The hospitality, the Southern hospitality there was so great. And the hurdler says, I agree. There is a lot of history. There is a lot of history. Um, and let's make sure to get this up to 50 likes before I go on. But when I went to the bookstore, it was packed. Everybody was trying to get JSU gear. Um, it was red out. So any red shirt, any red hat, that was gone. I mean, there was still some there, but they were buying that like nobody's business. I uh, got me this J hat right here, right there. It looks clean. <laughs> I came front. It looks clean, man. I had to get it. I was looking for a, a, one of those JSU visors because I like to wear visors. For those who know me, I'm a visor guy. I always wear visors. Um, but they didn't have any in stock, so. I just got this, and I got this jacket right here. I had to get it. You know, when you see something nice, and you kind of like, let me be frugal a little bit, but this stood out. I was like, man, I got to get this. Uh, going through the campus of JSU, I saw uh, not only great people, but, man, the beautiful sisters. I know I did a stream and, and somebody got annoyed that I said nice things about sisters, but I'm gonna keep saying nice things about sisters. Uh, and at JSU, they it, it felt it felt it felt like home, even though I'm not from there. But it, it reminds me of the the outside portion of Houston. Um, if you go to Pearview or or any other place in Texas, that's what it reminds me of. And uh, so that was jumping. The restaurants at Jackson, Mississippi are the bomb. If you ever go to Jackson, Mississippi, go to Zia's. I think it's pronounced Z-E-A. The ribs are so good that the meat come off the bone. Texture was right. And um, <laughs> when, I go, when I go back to Jackson, I definitely got to go back there. I got to go back there. That was nice. Uh, what else? I went to the Jackson State Stadium, Veteran Memorial Stadium. Everybody was getting their tickets. Uh, thanks to Ken, I was able to see uh, the whole operation. You know, you go upstairs into that stadium. You see people working on how the field should look. And one thing about JSU's athletic department, they're run, they're ran like an NFL organization. They expect perfection. They're not ran like a standard HBCU. I saw it. Phone calls were calling off like 90 going north. Uh yeah, people pointing where to go, this, that, that. The field should have this, have that. Um, I got to meet Ashley Robinson. Ashley Robinson is not only a great man, but a leader. And being in his position is not easy. And for him to have so much success and taking a chance and making sure Coach Prime has everything he needs is why he's great at what he does. You know, I shook his hand. Uh, let him know that he has done a great job. And um, pretty much I was letting people do their job, really. Uh, one thing about me, I'm not I'm not an in-your-face in your type of person. Like, hey, how you, you know, I'll say hey and uh, be respectful. But I wanted to make sure everyone's doing what they need to do. 
but I was it was good to see Ashley Robinson and and the whole staff really uh, just polite and walking onto the field. This was the, the day before the game, by the way. Walking onto the field, man, I it was it was pretty historic. I say it like that. Um, the grass was amazing. And to the football players who are listening, or former football players and athletes, yeah, y'all know what I mean. When y'all go to a field before a game or the day before the game, and you feel the grass and you feel the uh just the, the whole festivities and what they have set up. Uh they had these red chairs. Now, I was joking, I was joking with Ken. I said, Man, I hope they put a uh well, you know, one of them sun blockers on top of the chair because it's right there where the heat is at. But they had these red chairs. And I believe it was, it was for uh, the cast of P-Valley and uh, for a pre-P-R-E, a Young Dolph's group. Shout out to Young Dolph's family who was there at the game. Uh, prayers to them. And the legacy of Young Dolph lives on. Uh his family was there. Everybody was there. Uh, the operation at JSU, this is what HBCUs have to do. And I know some people are going to be like, it's not about J JSU and all this stuff, but you got to give respect for teams and organizations who are not only leveling the playing field, but exceeding the playing field to take the, their game, their 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 school to another level. This is what HBCU should do. Uh, no school should be complacent. No school should just uh, settle for a middle of the pack, sort of say. And uh, even though this is live, if you have any questions, and I know everyone's just listening, uh, put your Put your uh, questions in the comment section. After I explain my trip, I'm going to read the comments. Let me read this real quick before I go on. Sylvester Taylor says, P-Valley Cast coming to the homecoming uh, October 22nd. Okay. So those red chairs were just for pre uh, Young Dolph's group. So that makes sense. But they are coming on October 22nd. Yeah, because when I was there, all I heard was, you know, it was P-Valley in pre that was coming. Uh, it looked like it was just, P just pre was there. Uh, shout out to Chris Silas. He said, peace and blessings, my God. Peace and blessings, peace and love to you as well. Um, but let me tell you uh, a unique situation. When I went back to the hotel, when I went back to the hotel, guess who was at the hotel? I was at the Westin. I didn't even realize this. Um, it was a bunch of Grambler State fans, and we chopped it up. We was laughing. Uh, they were joking around, and they said, you're going to wear our gear, right? I said, hey, man, if you if you tell me where to get it, I'll get it. If you hook it up, that's great, too. But Grambler State came in in style, man. I'm talking about Cadillacs, uh, Escalades. Their, their, their cars were clean. Uh, there was one brother. And I don't know how in the heck he pulled this off because it was hot as it was hot as hell in Jackson, Mississippi. Had a suit on. <laughs> Check it in to the hotel. I kid you not. It was like a, you know, the grambling color. It was just a fan. Uh, peace and blessings to Veronica Hall. She said, greetings, family. And Sylvester Taylor said, yeah, young doll family. Yes, they were there. And to support the channel, uh, you can super chat, cash app. Uh, it goes back to the channel. Uh, make sure to hit the like button. That helps. But, man, I was like, man, I'm impressed. Grambling State, all like all the fans came through at the Westin and, and just synchronized. They were confident, uh, a lot of swagger. And I, I wasn't surprised because Grambling State has a lot of history. They're prideful, and you want HBCUs to be to have pride for their schools. 
and uh and uh it you know i chopped it up with them i i talked about most of the fans i talked to of grambling i was telling them the players that they have that you know number one i, I told them that maurice washington going forward this is before the game by the way i said he needs to have no 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 less than 20 plus carries or, or touches both running and throw and catching the ball he's too explosive i watched him at the game maurice washington looks every bit of four three speed as, as well as chance williams if grambling can figure that out they will win more games uh hawkins the quarterback uh I was telling him that he can win games for him. He, he has mobility. He's getting better knowing the offense. Uh, all, all it comes down to is really identity with Grambling. When our offensive identity is set, they have a chance to win the West. And I was telling them this before the Jackson State Grambling game. But, you know, we was laughing, chopping it up uh, with the Grambling State fans. Uh, some of you who who follow me that really know me behind the scenes know I got family not only in Houston, but some parts of Louisiana as well. We was talking about some of the places uh, my family goes to in Louisiana, like Marksville, uh, where once in every blue moon we have a family reunion out there. And we talk about certain casinos that are out there. It, it was fun. certain food spots so it, it was a great conversation and um chris silas says one guy came to the game suit looking like doug Dimadon. <laughs> they were dressed <laughs> they were dressed clean man i like all right grambling i see you man but this is what i didn't realize i didn't realize that the players were going to stay there. So the Grambling State players stayed at the, uh, the Western. And they came in, they had clean jump sh- suits, uh, the black ones with the Grambling logo on there. I said, what's up to some of the players? Uh, not really trying to be in their way because, you know, players are busy. The, the, the day before the game, they're trying to relax. They're not trying to – Yeah, for the athletes out there, y'all know what I'm talking about. They're trying to – Clear their mind out, but they were there. Um, the Westin was nice. Uh, the restaurant, everybody was at the restaurant, at the bar, having fun, having a good time. Uh, it was it was it was great. And people were asking me about the water situation. The water's fixed. I repeat, the water's fixed. Uh, my room water was working well. The water was good. So there was no place that the water was bad. The water was fixed. I made sure to check it. Everything was good. So uh, I had a lot of people asking me that. How was the water? How was the water? How was the water? The water was good. Um, Sylvester Taylor said, first time joining your channel. um, Can you give me your background and affiliation with HBCU Sports? Um, I don't really have... And that's a good question. Uh, when before I I talked about HBCUs, my brother, I was really just talking about basketball. And then I'm a big fan of the Lamelo's game and some of the Ball family. I did that before, but my family history has always been about HBCUs. My father uh, attended Prairie A and M in the mid '80s. My uncles went to Texas Southern. So it's always in my family. It was always in my blood. The thing is, in the past, we all know this, HBCUs were not popular to talk about during those times. And thankfully, Coach Prime, he's made it cool. He's made it popular. And and this is the dream. Uh, One thing about us as people, as black folks, about our community is when we see great change, we support it. No matter if it's new or anything else, if we see great change and we see something that can make our community better, we support it. 
And that goes back to our conscious. We support good things. We support when people are helping others out in need. We support people who are uh, uh, creating uh, better things for our kind, for our people. That's what we support. And I've always been a big fan of uh, Deion Sanders, man. My father was been a Cowboys fan all his life, um, such as I have. And um, always been a big fan of Coach Prime, man, uh, Deion Sanders. So that's just the icing on the cake. But I love what's going on, and I'm glad it's it's being talked about. I, I want HBCUs to be – and I'm very serious when I say this. I want HBCUs to be the best thing going, and it can be. And Sylvester Taylor, I want to thank you for subscribing to my channel, man, and, and, and just join it, man. Um, all questions are welcome. That was a good question by Sylvester Taylor. Uh, Coach Simmons says, go, DJ. That's my DJ, Lil Wayne Base. Hey, man, shout out to Coach Simmons. Make sure you subscribe to his channel. Russell Haynes says, all HBCUs on the up and doing better. That's what it's all about. Shout out to CH. Uh, let me read Veronica Hall. Thank you for pointing that out. The boil water alert was lifted last week. And I kind of got, and I know people were asking me questions, like people hitting my, you know, DMs and, and just always asking about the water. So I was glad to clarify, I mean, not clarify, but point that out. The water was good. <laughs> um, when I went to Jackson, everything was operating well. And um, so the water was good. The, the customer service at the Westin, shout out to everyone at the Westin. Excellent service. Pl uh, kind, polite. Uh, when you ask them something, they, they were very helpful. The valet was nice. Golden Child, JoJo says, water wasn't as bad as the media said. Yeah, that's just the media. Um, I wish the media would have reported that it was getting better because um, I talked to some Grambling fans and some Jackson State fans who were at the hotel. We were talking about the water, and they was like, I wish they would have pointed out the water got fixed. And I, and I told them that the media, man, they just – they never want to point out things – that are fixed. They always want to put a fear tactic on things. And um, we, we was chopping up. Uh, one thing about HBC fans, no matter if you're Jackson State Grambling, when we talk about real stuff, we talk about real stuff. We was talking about um, what's going on around the world, what we could do better as people to, to, to build each other up. And uh, everyone was on the same wavelength. Um, one thing about the citizens of Jackson, uh, they can spot who's real and they can spot who's fake. And if you ain't got no authenticity, if you ain't got no humbleness, uh, if you don't appreciate uh, when someone's being nice, when someone's trying to sh welcome you, then they can spot that a mile away. Uh, the citizens of Jackson are very smart. Very smart. They understand the game within the game. They understand all of it. So you, you're not going to be able to fool them. <laughs> I'm letting you know. Sylvester Taylor says, thanks. As a Jackson State grad and an HBC advocate, I am loving the additional coverage by so many podcasters. Thank you. And that's what it's all about. Um, um, there, there, It's a great thing that there's a lot of podcasts going on YouTube. And I laugh if anyone thinks it's competition. It shouldn't be competition because if everyone follows the same people, they're going to bound to watch your video. So uh, when I do YouTube, it's not only to educate, but to build friendships, to to give me a some type of peace. Uh, I never want to have YouTube as stressful. If that's the case, I'll just go back working at my stressful job, <laughs> which I'm doing right now. Um, YouTube gives me an escape to be around like-minded folks. And that's what it's supposed to be about. Never do things that stress you out. That's one, one thing I learned about life. 
Uh, Leonard Chat says the Jackson news media reported that it was a crisis. What that week? I understand last week, <laughs> but uh, I didn't. I didn't see none of that this week. Now last week, yes. Kevin Price says this is why independent media is so important. No one's going to tell you the story be better than us. Salute my brother. Yeah, uh, one thing uh, I would do, if I'm able to see it, I will report it, uh, and that's the real. And when I tell you everything that went down at the stadium, we're going to go on next. Y'all better tune in, because this is really about to get real. Um, the I Love Texas says, start the game at 6 p.m. Yeah, that should have started at 6. But, you know, the South – no matter if it's SEC, HBCU, SWAC, no matter what league conference you're in, y'all know how the South is. They should be playing night games, but they never do it. Veronica Hill says the water was fixed the week after FAMU game. They had the boil water alert in the place until last week as precaution. Thank you for pointing that out. If it was really, and this is how – People got to be aware of situations. If it was still a safety hazard problem, you know what most places will do, especially hotels? They will contact you and say, since this is a crisis, you, your reservation's candle, canceled. We're going to refund it back. Everything like that would have happened. That's what usually happens when it's a crisis. But shout out to Veronica for pointing it out. Uh, Randy Thibodeau. He says, Southern alum in the house, love the show. Thank you, my brother. I know Southern lost, but they got to find a way to regroup. There's too much talent on that defense. And Texas Southern, Andrew Body is a great quarterback. But as a team, Southern, I picked Southern not to lose that many games. I was very disappointed. Uh, hopefully, uh, Coach Dooley could get that fixed uh, because looking on paper, they have the athletes. Um, Chris says, I don't know why games are started at 1 or 2 p.m. Games are used to be at 6 p.m. Yeah. But I, I was I drunk about seven glasses of water. I kid you not. So it helped a little bit, but it was hot. Spence Matthews says NFL games start at 12. Ain't nobody complaining. Well, most NFL stadiums have everything you need. Um, and you're talking about a billion dollar industry. But I do see your point, though. And growing up in Texas, uh, like football in Texas is like a religion. So when you, when you, when you go to games, no matter how hot it is, we're going to go to the game. So I, I knew it was hot like like nobody's business, but I just had to deal with it. I wanted to watch a good matchup. Mark People says, don't PWIs play in daytime regularly? I used to watch those games before going to sweat games. They do. Uh, Georgia was playing South Carolina in a, in a uh, grudged heat. Uh, shout out to who? Jargon Media Network. He talks about basketball, HBCUs, and he's an alum a pair of a and them play basketball there. Make sure to subscribe to his channel. One of the good ones in his YouTube game. I guarantee you. Uh, he said, I'm glad to hear this because somebody made it seem like the water was a huge issue out there. Yeah, it was fixed when I was there. It was fixed. It was The water was fixed. And Coach Prime tried to tell everybody that the water would be fixed before the game. He guaranteed it. And Coach Prime was a man of his word. Uh, let me see. Let me go back to this. Man, the comments are coming through. Uh, Geniality says, does it have to do with national televised games times? Yeah, uh, that plays a part as well. Because once ESPN gives you a time slot, you have to take it. So... Uh, like someone posted that SEC plays games at 2.30 p.m. East uh, Central Time. It helps. It's still hot, but it helps because it's not 
like right in the middle of noon where the sun is really out. It's still hot though. Sylvester Taylor says, based on the convo with the AD, it's ESPN coverage related. That's the reason for the early starts. And that's why when I went up there to the athletic office, when they were so busy, ESPN was going to be there, national coverage. They were, again, AD Ashley Robinson, the athletic department, are just on it, man. They're just organized. That's one thing I noticed. Very organized. I mean, anybody would be a fool to criticize A.D. Robinson. If they actually saw what A.D. Robinson does, they wouldn't be out here just nitpicking. What, but he's a, he's a damn good A.D. I repeat, A.D. Robinson is a damn good A.D. Everywhere he's been, he's done well. He went to PV, they done well. Now he's at Jackson, they're doing well. So he has a great resume. I'll read some of these comments. Rusty Shackelford said, hey, DJ, what high school did you go to in the H? I went to, oh, you went to Sterling? Well, I'm bit, it, I don't like putting my business out there on here. Uh, do you have me on Twitter? Yeah, I, I, I said on Twitter. But I have some friends and family who went to either went to school or they know. So yeah, just uh, if you follow me on Twitter, uh, just uh, at DJ, DJ's Raw Uncut Truth One. That's my Twitter, and uh, yeah, I'm a private person. That's like the good and bad about YouTube, man. <laughs> He said, all right, I got you. Yeah, that's the good and bad part about YouTube, man. It's a bunch of trolls. See, I said, the elephant in the room, we are people who are not living healthy life, lifestyles. And I, I'm thankful that I run a lot every morning, almost every morning. I work out time to time. Now, I'm not the most fit, fit guy right now. But uh, I made sure to be prepared. I drank a bunch of water. I drank a bunch of water, man. And uh, when I got to the stadium, this is the good part that y'all want to hear right here. The stadium. The ticket workers were excellent. I got through. They scanned my code from my phone. In there, bam. Now, people was talking about a water bottle shortage. Here's the truth about that. And if you want to clip this, anybody, go ahead and do it. The reason why there was a shortage. I've never seen this at a stadium before. Not like this. I saw people with, uh, you know, those ice chests. So as soon as the concession stands open, I saw people buying 15 to 20 bottles a pack. And you should have seen the faces of the concession stand workers. They, they were like, oh, wow. Buying nothing but bottles of water. And I knew then if I don't get a bottle of water, and I should have uh, I should have got more than what I had, but I knew then if I didn't at least get two bottles of water, <laughs> then if I go back, it's not going to be there. Because I, I saw it then. Because a lot of people were saying, like, oh, it's JSU's fault and stuff. Man, that's because people were buying a, a big amounts of water bottles. That's the truth. I saw it firsthand. Ken saw it. Zoe saw it. Everyone at the game saw it. There's nothing you can do when people are buying 15 to 20 bottles of water each time. I know they're not going to give them a water limit. Because that's going to call fr fr friction. Now, tell me if I'm lying or not, family. If someone, if if JSU said we're only going to have a water limit of two or any water limit, it could be two or four. That's going to be problems.
But yeah, that that's what that's what happened, man. Now, yeah, them boys said the entrance to the stadium was easy. Uh, Pierre says, "Can you bring your own water container?" I saw a lot of people do it, and and, and I know people are nitpicking about the JSU Stadium, but I'm being honest of what I'm telling you because I, I turned out pretty well. Uh, there was free ice. So if you was hot, you could get free ice. They had a bunch of ice. Uh, now, going forward, here's what I want JSU to do, like in their stadium in the future. Um, y'all know those concession stands where, not the concession, but the concession where you walk up to the person and you can just buy something? I think that would be cool. Like they hold up uh, uh, everything you need, snacks and everything. They go to each row, uh, $2 for water, three, $5 for this, that. That would be cool. Uh, Sylvester Taylor said it was a madhouse. Yeah, everybody getting water the first time, and the people in the back of the line knew, like, man, this water about to run out. He said, them boys said, you are correct. The water limit would have been a problem too. Yeah. Cause that's what they're saying. They're saying like there should have been a water limit. That's not gonna help. You know how we are as black folks. <laughs> when you put a limit on stuff, the hood comes out of us, man. Now I would have been civilized because I was raised, you know. Shout out to my parents, but some people they ain't gonna take that. They would have been like, What do you what the hell you mean? A water limit. That's exactly what they would have told them. It would have never worked. That's why the day, if you go, my advice, if you go before the game, wear something light, number one. Number two, drink a bunch of water. Drink, I'm going to be nice, eight glasses of water will help. And just a life, uh, and just a life advice. We ain't supposed to be eating all that sugar anyway. We eating all the sugar, the, the 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 starches and stuff, and it catches up with you when you're around that sun. Even though I drank a bunch of water the day before, during the third quarter, I was like feeling like heat dizziness a little bit. But from the water I drunk the day before, it kept me afloat. And I went to the concession stand and said, we're out of water. I was like, man, what y'all mean we're out of water? I was like, damn. But I, I, I was ticked off, but I wasn't trying to cause it. So I was polite. I was like, um, do you have anything else? And all they had was alcohol. And I know you're not supposed to drink alcohol when you're um, dehydrated, but I, I wanted some type of liquid. So I just did it anyway. And uh it, suffi it suffice, and I was at that little, y'all know what I'm talking about, that little hallway before you get to the main part of the stadium. I was sitting there a couple couple minutes, and once I did that, I had a swig. I was good. I went back out there. I was chopping it up with the JSU fans. I was chopping it up with the um, uh, Grambling fans. I appreciate that, uh, Theopolis Jones. And I want to say uh, a lot of brothers doing their things on HBCU content as well. Uh, I want y'all, before I go in, I want y'all to subscribe to Ken Clark, 1400. Uh, Zoe, 1400. He's just started his channel. Subscribe to him. Subscribe to Tiger Talk with the 1400 Club. Subscribe to Blitz City Podcast. Subscribe to Tomorrow the Sports Network, Coach Simmons. Uh, between the game sports hoop jargon um uh, hbcu game day the pregame show uh deon sanders jr has a channel that's great uh very informative everybody's doing their thing man i i would say more channels but i i have all day so um the blue bloods is <laughs> a bunch of them out there uh uh I'm trying one more, one more, one more. Um, HBCU, Swag Buzz, my bro brother Swag Buzz, uh, Doc Holiday, 
uh, HBCU Overdrive. It's a bunch out there. And speaking of Swag Buzz, man, if you haven't tuned in to Swag Buzz's call-in show, do it. Because it's very entertaining, man. It's very entertaining. Swag Buzz is a great brother, man. Uh, well off meet, well off media. That's a uh, Deion Sanders Jr.'s channel. That 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 will give you all the updates you need about Jackson State. If you want an update of what they're doing, being filmed, that too. They they're all doing their thing. Yeah, that's my dog, Swag Buzz, man. He's just uh, just a good brother, man. You know. And one thing about Swag Buzz, when he says his opinion, he he ain't gonna he ain't gonna just switch it up or anything. He's always himself. I appreciate people like Swag Buzz and every name I miss mentioned, man. They doing their thing. Uh, Yard Talk, she has a channel as well. Yeah, Mister Floyd is hilarious. <laughs> he he ain't gonna hide a damn thing. Mister Floyd gonna let you know. Uh, locked in. That's the name I was trying to remember. CH, thank you for that. Locked on HBCU. And Locked on HBCU is from Houston. Graduated from an HBCU. Has a great content. HBCU game day. The OGs. They they hold it down, man. Water and Gatorade. Right, Mario? And I know a lot of people may laugh about this. But pickle juice helps. Pickle juice helps from prevents cramping from heat cramps, uh, electrolytes. It puts a lot of electrolytes in your body. These are things you got to do before you go to hot games. Sylvester Taylor says hydrate. Saturday supposed to be just as hot for the Valley game. Expect to see more available water inside the stadium. And here's how. Um, when it comes to stuff like water and other things for concession stands, when you go to when you go to these games, you got to make sure the expectation that if it's record heat, <laughs> it, it may run out because when you do inventory, there's a set load, and they don't exceed that. So if, if someone buys a boatload of water, the Sani water, the expectation is this is how much we're going to purchase. Because if you exceed that, that's bad for business. And Ken Clark talked about it because he knows about inventory. He knows about things like that. He explained it last night. Shout out to HBCU Band Talk. Speaking of the bands, the Sonic Boom, man. The sonic boom was as good as advertised. In the heat, I don't know how they did it. They're in the heat, like everybody else, right? And they're playing their songs and their music it, like, like they weren't having all the sun on them. It was, it was so expiring, the energy they had. I was telling somebody sitting behind me, I don't know how the Sonic Boom was able to have that that energy. They're moving around. They, they're they synchronized. They, they're hitting the right notes. And, and to all the JSU fans, you were not lying. The Sonic Boom of the South is elite. They're, they're elite. Uh, Try to avoid assuming alcohol the night before. Yep. It's something I I know it's hard to do for some people, but you're gonna have to do that when you go before, when you go to games, especially in the daytime. Don't be drinking a bunch of alcohol. Don't try to drink any alcohol if you're gonna be in around a lot of heat. Veronica Hall said they are professionals. Yeah, yeah. Man, it looked like man, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be surprised if Sonic Boom of the South was was uh, was treating the day before the game like an athlete. They looked very um, hydrated. Like they drunk. You know how I said I drunk eight bottles of water. 
the sonic boom looked like they drunk 16 bottles of water. I know I'm exaggerating, but you can tell someone's in good shape when they're eating the right stuff. Like someone pointed out, watermelons, uh, uh, um, uh, different waters, Gatorades, and don't be surprised, pickle juice. The Blue Bloods, peace and blessings. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Uh, the Blue Bloods, man, this, this channel's jumping lately, man. <laughs> The Blue Bloods having that sauce right now. He said, shout out to my guy, Corey, and the Sonic Boom. Yeah, they did their thing, bro. They did their thing, man. I was just impressed. Their body moving. They moving around. In the fourth quarter, I saw a bunch of smiles, laughs. It's like the heat didn't even get to them. Now, they're human beings. I'm sure they're like, man, it's hot as heck. But they were just, they was just pumped up, man. Shout out to the drum majors, the cheerleaders. They they had them prepared, man. Y'all know I ain't lying, man. That's when you know the Sonic Boom offseason. Their camp is probably brutal <laughs> to handle conditions like this. Let me read some of these comments. Uh, Mr. Capturing Life says, Boom Band is like boot camp 88. Man. Yeah, they, they were mentally prepared. The Sonic Boom in the South, mentally prepared. They hit their note. You can tell when you're tired and you're exhausted. The notes don't, don't sound the same. You didn't hear that one time with the Sonic Boom. Shout out to my dog, Swag Buzz. What's good, my brother, man? He said, oh, yeah, that late night practicing. Yeah, they was prepared. I'm sitting right there. I went. I went closer because really I was middle of the. I was like at the end of the field, but good area. But I moved to the middle because I wanted to hear that boom. I wanted to hear that sound. I'm looking at the body language. I'm like, how did they, bro? I'm no lie. I was saying to myself, how is the sonic boom doing this? I didn't even see nobody hunching over. I didn't see anybody. Uh. Uh. Just like gasping for air i saw some band members just they got the legs folded just you know they know they about to they just chilling watching the game and they know they're about to uh play some hit songs the swagger the the confidence uh starlight moon says the second best hbcu band in the land love the boom the second best. Who's the first best? The Marching 100? <laughs> to all my band experts, let me know if the Sonic Boom in the South is not the best, who's the best? Larry McNeil says, don't forget about the Black Boss channel with Jeff Lightly. Great content also. Yeah, shout out to him. But like I said, man, if I start naming down HBCU content creators, I have all day. <laughs> so all... <laughs> So I appreciate all the channels, man. They all doing their thing. Now, HBCU Band Talk says he heard that Bethune Cookman is the best band out there. Yeah, I heard. I Actually, at uh, Slack Buzz, I did hear someone at the stadium tell me because they were educating me on the bands. They said Southern's band is the real deal. They said Southern, um, the Southern Jags band is... They on, they on that level, man. And I had I had about four people because I'm I'm a, I'm talking to people not only the game but the bands, man. I wanted to be educated. I had some people saying the Sonic Boom in the South is number one, and then the Southern. Um, I had two people who just go to the game and they said a marching one hundred of FAMU. Two people did. Uh, Yo says Bethune's band might be the most disliked in the swag. <laughs> Why is that? Because they're not originally swag members. Swag Buzz says Southern versus JSU is the best band battle. I gotta find a way to go to the Southern versus Jackson State game. Now, family, 
uh, yeah, the human. That's the name. That's the name I heard right there. Thank you for that, Joe Eagle. The human jukebox. Man, I like that name. That's clean right there. The human jukebox. And the announcers, man, why y'all had to do Grambler like that? They had a, a meme of SpongeBob. <laughs> I'm trying to remember what it said, but it, they had a meme of SpongeBob, and they were trying to make fun of the uh, Grambling band. Uh, that that band life is serious, man. Y'all know what I'm talking about, Quentin. Now you know what I'm talking about. I'm trying to remember what they said. I was like, I was so into the game. Uh, the Blue Blood says, my old neighbor is a freshman at Jackson State right now. He had the boom, and that dude practiced for like two to three months before he left every single day in the backyard. Dedication was unreal. I, I see it, man. Uh, I was saying to myself, I know this sounds funny, but I was telling myself um, that I, I need to be on that uh, – that Sonic Boom fitness plan. Because whatever they're doing is working, man. And being in the band is not easy. And I know they're not going to, I know people are not going to give band, uh, people who are in the band credit, but it's like being an athlete, the dedication, the, the work you do, uh, remembering the notes. When I was in high school, I was in choir. And uh, for those who know, I know how to sing. And I know how tough it is to hit notes and making sure you're on key and making sure you, you're clear and concise. But band is another level. You got to have the movements right. You got to move as one. Like Chris Salas says, it's, band is a sport. It pretty much is a sport. You have to move at a good pace. You got to be organized. You got it's It's like the – like – it's like like military boot camp in the summers. And I'm not trying to exaggerate, but that's how it is. Mr. Capturing Life. I'm going to check that out. He said, wave Dave into that debate. Look it, at, look it up on YouTube. I'm going to do that. Time and commitment, right. I would never, I would never, ever, try to say, oh, the, the people in the band don't do this or that. I've seen it firsthand. Those bands, and not, not just the Sonic Boom, but Grambling's band, they putting in work, they're moving around, and it's it's not easy. When I was in middle school, Drumline came out, and everybody wanted to be a percussionist. And we had a line full of people. This is when that movie came out. Now I knew I was a good singer, but playing the percussion, it was it wasn't easy at all. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, I, I'm doing this, I'm reading the notes, and I'm doing this and reading the notes. You got to be on key and not look too much at the notes. It's, yeah, I'm telling you, it's not easy. You got to put in work, man. That drum line is not for the faint of heart. You got to know what you're doing. Yeah, Robert Marshall said drum lines put in hours per day in the off season. Some people think that being a drum line, you just wake up and just look cool with the band gear. And no, it takes, you got to put in that work. Like Brian Johnson said, boom, people are fit. They're in top notch shape. The boom was such in shape that they could have gone an extra hour. That's what it looked like to me of playing music because they were laughing, kicking it, just having a good time and playing good music. Uh, David Wynn says, Wave, Wavy Dave is a goat of mascots. R.P. Wavy D Dave, R.P. to a legend, man. Uh, Chris Silas says, yeah, JSU versus Southern is the best rivalry in the SWAC. I've been hearing that uh, the Jackson State fans have told me countless of times. If 
if you're not going to go to the homecoming game, go to the Jackson State versus Southern game. It is a rival. They can't stand each other, but they respect the history. They just can't stand them. Shout out to Brian Johnson for the $6 super chat to help grow this channel out. Uh, appreciate all the love from everyone. Yeah, the Boombox Classic is going to be yeah, it's going to be really good. I just hope Southern before that game starts take care of the business, man. Take I want the Boombox Classic to be two teams with good records. That's when it's played the best. But I do realize when Jackson State plays Southern, throw the records out. Like last season. Remember how close that game was. And shout out to Shiloh Sanders for the game-winning interception. And Shadir for the game-winning touchdown. Quinn Nice says, check out JSU Southern 2010 from zero quarter to the end of the game was wild. Yeah, let me write that. Let me type that down on my phone. Chris Silas says more hostile in Baton Rouge. Boy, that's human jukebox versus Sonic Boom. That sounds like that's going to be a Super Bowl for bands. <laughs> that's going to be like the Super Bowl, man. Uh, Pierre Cummins says JSU Southern Band Battle is better in Jackson. Trust me. My dog Swap Bus says every section is like a fraternity. It's like a tradition in HBCU bands. Yeah, I saw it firsthand. They like band is life to them, man. And this is why I love HBCU football. There's no culture like HBCU football. If you take away the bands, you don't have the HBCU culture. You need that with the football. The athletics may pay certain things, which is true. But the bands preserve the culture. Ooh, that sounds good. I'm going to say it again. The athletics, as we all know, pays for everything. That's the truth, especially football. But the bands preserve the culture. These FBS schools, they don't have bands like this. When FAMU, the March of 100, did that co collaboration with UNC's band, the UNC fans were just excited, and the UNC band was just so in awe of being able to play music with such a talent like the March of 100. You should have seen it. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to tune into that Alcorn game. Alcorn has been play, playing really well. They played one bad game. I know Tulane is a lot improved this year. That was the only game I wasn't impressed with execution wise making sure you know that the offense is in the flow but when all corn is clicking on all cylinders they're a really good team and they should have won against Stephen F Austin make sure to hit the like button subscribe to this channels and if you haven't subscribe to swag buzz blue bloods uh Ken Clark 1400 Zoe 1400, Tomorrow Leader Sport Network, Blitz City, uh, Coach Simmons. The list goes on. Um, the list goes on, man. Sylvester Taylor says, records go out the window when Jackson State plays Southern. Go Tigers. No lie about that, man. Sophia Lamar says to me, Jackson State Sonic Boom in the bet is the most is the best, most complete band in the land. Love the boom. Joe Eagle says the March of 100 has a rich history, but they not the same today. Same goes for Grambling. But yeah, the city of Jackson has been great to me, man. And I'm I'm definitely gonna go back. 
I want to say shout out to Trio, the the club out there. Great music, the bar. Um, a lot of people went there after the game. And then another shout out to Name and Faces. My dog Deputy Mario hooked the brother up, man. And it, and Deputy Mario, if you're listening, thank you, my brother. I repeat, thank you for the hospitality and just uh, make sure all was good, man. Just uh, no, it was great, man. So he watches my channel, and it's funny when I, when I walk by the stadium, man. I had people like hit my shoulder, like, "Are you DJ?" Oh. I kind of jumped a little bit. I was like, I didn't know who was on my shoulder, but. The fact that they know my channel and and um and and know what I stand for it means a lot to me. Again, I do this as a hobby. I do this for fun to connect with people, and I appreciate every single one of you who subscribe to the channel. And uh, the, the the train keeps moving. We're, we're almost at eight thousand subs. Uh, when basketball season start, look out for the basketball content. Um, the reason why I haven't made as much basketball content now is, let's be honest, there's not really much to talk about in basketball. So I'm definitely not going to talk about things that are not um, there to talk about. But basketball season is on its way. Be on the lookout for that. I hope my Lakers handle business this year. It's going to be a tough year in the West, as always. And uh, the Hornets, the only because I root for LaMelo, they need to get their stuff together. But this has been a great stream. Thank you, Jackson State. Thank you to the citizens for showing me a good time. Uh, it's almost every person I talk to always have always told me to, hey, man, come back. I'm definitely going to come back to the city of Jackson. I was glad to tell you all the real deal. What was what, what was it like out there? Uh Things to look forward to. They're building new stores, new places. Um, Jackson State is booming right now. And when you have Coach Prime Deion Sanders there, who is leading your program, and you have AD Ashley Robinson, who is leading as well, you create greatness. So uh, CS says, will you have any HBC basketball content? Yeah, I will definitely do that as well. And I, uh, I'm glad you mentioned that because I had people come up to me and tell me I need to do that more. Uh, they would like to hear my input about it. Solo Virgo says, no problem. You good, fam. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely coming back. Y'all yeah, let me know in the comment section which game should I go to because I'm, I'm trying to go to one more. I'm moving back to Texas. I got a lot of stuff going on. Um, I would like to go to three games, but I can only go to one. Because I am going to go to the Celebration Bowl. I will go to that one. But I'm talking about in the regular season. What two games should I go to? Should I go to Homecoming, Campbell game? Or should I go to the arch rival, Southern? And shout out to HBCU Spotlight. It's a great stream, bro. And HBCU Spotlight, I love your channel, my brother. Subscribe to this channel. Uh, Swagbus says, what part of Texas? I'm moving to Austin, Texas. So I'm excited about that. I've been moving all I've been moving all day, man. Making sure I got my ducks in a row, man. It's been a busy day, but I wanted to do this stream just to talk about such a wonderful time I had at Jackson, Mississippi, man. I wouldn't be surprised, and I'm not trying to be funny, but I'm being real. I would not be surprised if uh Jackson State is uh, a fourth home to me. <laughs> That's how much love the city has given me. And I appreciate every single person I encountered. Uh, Sylvester Taylor says, hit up Johnny T's during your next visit. Great food and atmosphere. Yeah, let me type that down. Johnny T's. Let me do that right now. Johnny T's. Uh, Randall, Randall Thomas said he down, down the highway in Colleen. Yeah, shout out to Colleen, man. Big LT he said, already, bro. Dallas in the building. Shout out to D Town, man. 
Shout out to Dallas. Uh, Swag Buzz, my brother, he says, I'm going to come out to Texas, holler at you. I got to hit Dallas this year. Hey, anytime, Swag Buzz. Yeah. Oh, that's guess who I saw at the game? JSU Tigers, man. He said, you're, you're cool too, Raw 100. Hey, brother, it was good to meet you and the missus, man. Man, the JSU Tigers is a real one, man. He is a real one, man. We was talking about some, we was talking about some real stuff after the game, man. And, and JSU Tigers, you know what we was talking about. We was talking about that real stuff, man. He's a good one, man. Now, Mr. Capture Light said I should come to homecoming. Southern for sure. Man, you know that's a rival when 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 people are telling me to go to the Southern game. Like, that's the game to go to. JSU Tigers, you already know, my brother. <laughs> Deputy Mario in the building. My brother. Hey, Deputy Mario, thank you for looking out for me. Names and faces, as you suggested, was great, man. The staff was great. Bartenders was on. I mean, people was there. Uh, a lot of people was at that joint, man. Uh, coach, uh, Coach Reed, the women's basketball coach, was there. I mean, it was jumping. The DJ at Names and Faces, he got to be the best one I heard at Jackson because the music wasn't so loud. You can't hear yourself talk. You know, you want to go to places, you want to hear the music. But you don't want to be that loud where you can't hear yourself talk. So shout out to the DJ out there at Names and Faces, man. Shout out to the cook at Names and Faces. Uh, he's probably the best in the city. Now, I only went to three restaurants in Jackson, but he's probably the best in the city. And Deputy Marl, if you know his name, let me know, because that brother right there whipped it up in the kitchen. Uh, Swag Buzz says, Southern over homecoming. I'll take your word for that. I'll take your word for that. If anyone knows Jackson, it's definitely Swag Buzz. That's why you got to subscribe to his channel, man. His name is Cook Bones. Yeah, shout out to Cook Bones, man. The thing is, I'm so intrigued with that Campbell game, though. But then again, the rivalry. I like watching rivalry games. And knowing what we know about Southern, what they did last year when they played against Jackson State, that's very tempting. Shout out to Ed Houston. He said, peace and blessings to all. Peace and blessings to everybody on the chat. Uh, I'm about to continue moving, man. I got to get this stuff in order. But I want to tell everyone, I appreciate everybody. Like the video, share the video. This was a great conversation. This was fun, man. This is what YouTube is supposed to be about, fun. If you ain't having fun, then it ain't, it ain't even worth it. If you don't have fun with what you, if you're not doing what you love, man, don't ever do it at all. And I, when I do YouTube, I have fun. I made an oath a long time ago. I would never stress on YouTube. I put that on the most high. I love this. I love what's going on in sports. That's one thing about sports. Sports, if there's one thing that can bring people together, it's sports. Swag Buzz says, the Campbell game will be lit, but the Louisiana people just make the game lit. Yeah, man. You ain't lying about that, bro. I was in the West, and those Grambling fans came out deep, man. I was like, man, I'm surrounded by Grambling fans. They were cool, though. Man, we was talking for a long time. Yeah, shout out to Grambling State. And I believe they found the right one with the Hugh Jackson. Just trust on what Hugh Jackson's doing. It's not the end of the world. 
when Jackson State's clicking, they could beat a lot of people by they could score 60 on anybody if uh if they're focused. This is how good Jackson State's offense is. I don't think people realize that. So Grambling State, you're you're gonna be just fine. Uh they have a chance to compete in the West. No one's stopping Maurice Washington and, and Chance Williams. I saw the speed myself. They're as good as advertised. So Grambling, do your thing. Uh, the Blue Blood says if NCCU beats Campbell next weekend, then all in then all the intrigue of that game will be gone. JSU needs to root for Campbell to beat NCCU. That's interesting. I like NCCU. I really like that team. But what you said was facts. If if NCCU beats Campbell, and I wouldn't be surprised if that actually happens, then it won't be as intriguing as the Southern game. And North Carolina Central is playing some damn good football, man. I, that 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 Davis Richards, he's the real deal. And I've talked to some Jackson State fans. They want South Carolina State to be the MEAC champion so they can uh, avenge that loss. But if North Carolina Central keeps playing like they are playing, if North Carolina Central beats Campbell and beats South Carolina State, they're going undefeated in the regular season. You heard it first. If they beat those two teams, they're going undefeated in the regular season. James Harris says, go to the vet early. The parking is – hey, the smartest thing I did when I went to the vet, I I, I caught a lift. That's the smartest thing I ever did. And when I got to walking distance, I told a lift driver, driver, you might as well park off right here. (laughs) Because this is going to be – I'm not going to be sitting in traffic, so – If you ever go to a Jackson State game, do not bring a car. Get you a lift. It's worth it. And if they and if they park and have it dropped off in close proximity so you can walk because traffic is long. Man, I wish I could make it to that uh North Carolina Central uh South Carolina State game. That's the game I want to go to as well, but I can't I can't go to a bunch of games this year. I move, you know, I'm moving and stuff. You know how it is. You're trying to get comfortable, acclimated. Joe Eagle says if North Carolina Central beats Campbell, then that celebration bowl is gonna be fire. That's if both teams handle business. Both teams got to handle business, though. Uh, Swag Buzz says, hardly miss any, hardly ever miss the Southern versus JSU game. I go every year and plan a vacation around it. Man, that's, I'm not even surprised. That is the game. Again, I've talked to multiple Jackson State fans. I thought they were going to say homecoming when they told me to pick which game. When I was at the game, they were like, no, Southern. Southern. But I'm about to handle business, man. Uh, Everybody, y'all have a blessed day. Share this video throughout all social media platforms. Peace and love, peace and blessings in the mouth.